da day da day hello hello here we are again another door on the two fat ladies advent calendar for 2022 hope you've been enjoying the uh doors that have been described so far there's still more to go let's go straight on and open the next one now then it says hello nick what are your favorite activities whilst painting do you listen to podcasts etc or watch tv or do other things okay well let's take this gosh let's take this right back shall we um <clears throat> okay here's a question for you what does a teenage boy do in his bedroom that starts with w and ends in in okay um, i'm sure you can think of some options but the answer of course is wargaming that's certainly what this teenage boy did in his bedroom in the 1980s was wargaming and that included painting i had a a, a bureau uh, an old bureau that had a lift down flap you know a writing bureau that was really quite nice and of course um one of the things i learned to do on it was to paint uh, and i used to set that up as my first ever painting table um it was a bit small to do the homework on but it was just about the right size to do painting on uh, so I used to paint in my bedroom, which probably wasn't the ideal thing in terms of inhaling, um, you know, the fumes of enamel paints uh, as we were using in those days. Um, but I used to sit in my room <coughs> and paint. And um, what did I do whilst painting? Well, I mostly listened in those days to the radio. Um, so we're talking another trip down memory lane, which we so, so frequently do. In these little log cast um, snippets uh, but 1980s I was listening to BBC Radio 1 probably uh, a bit of Mike Mike Reed in the morning and um, Steve Wright in the afternoon and in the evening it would be what would it be a bit of Janice Long and a bit of John Peel maybe but the radio Radio 1 used to be my my company uh, and then when the radio wasn't on I would be listening to um, tapes music tapes uh, anything really from a wide and varied musical interest uh, that would keep me interested while painting and you used to have the sort of 60 minute or 45 minute um, tapes didn't you so one side was 30 minutes I think on a, on a U60 and on a, on a U90 or something it was 45 minutes aside so I used to press play on the tape paint for 30 minutes or 45 minutes and then um, the tape would come to an end the machine would go click and you turn the tape over and listen to the other side and backwards and forwards the same old tape used to go time and time again um, because we didn't really have all the delights of modern entertainment systems that we have now <clears throat> i remember in particular one uh, audio program that i recorded off the radio in the 1980s which was a documentary done by the bbc called the scum of the earth and it wasn't a punk band, it was a, um, a documentary about the Peninsula War and the British Army in the Peninsula War. And it was six episodes that I taped off the radio uh, and each episode started to the to the strains of the British Grenadier, you know, bum 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 which was exactly what it sounded like. Uh, and I would sit and listen to that series back to back until I virtually knew it line by line um all the different stories of rifleman harris and the storming of the um the the uh queer de rodrigo and badahoff and all that kind of stuff really good and inspiring when you're painting napoleonics as well to listen to general picton addressing the connaught rangers before the storming of the um the breach in the walls you know so uh that was fantastic and actually i'd love to know what happened to that radio show because over time I've lost the tape of course and I've searched the internet I've searched YouTube for this show and I'd love to be able to listen to it again because it would just reconnect me to those happy days of painting uh, in my in my bedroom in the 1980s um so how have things changed over time well I guess you know painting is one of those things where I've never really had a dedicated paint station I think that time when I was in my in my bedroom there that was the closest i ever had to a dedicated paint station and i remember my parents uh we 
they brought her a table. You know the kind of table you get in a hospital that's on wheels and goes under the under the bed and the table therefore you can use the table for sitting in bed. Well my parents had one of these that I think they got for one of my grandparents. Um and that somehow became my painting table. Not that I could sit in bed painting, let me just kill that suggestion right at the start. But it was quite useful for being downstairs and being able to paint in front of the telly because we had a fairly upright chair that I could sit in um, in the back of the lounge that I think my granddad probably used to sit in when, when he was uh, alive but became kind of redundant when he passed on. And then this table that went with the chair was a good accompaniment to sit in and paint so you could sit and paint. And I had one of those kind of over the shoulder big spotlights, you know, that would be positioned on my right ear and painting and you know, lighting up the, the, the table for me. Uh, and I used to be able to paint then in front of the TV, but that was really pretty unsatisfactory. Plus, I was doing it in the lounge, um, you know, with my parents uh, as well. So I soon kind of went back upstairs to the bedroom bit, shut the door and went back to listening to the radio, etc. Um, but I've never really had a dedicated painting station, which means that when I do paint, I don't tend to do it in five minute chunks. I tend to put quite lengthy chunks of time into painting. And that's especially the case now where... I'm still having to get my paints out of the garage every time I want to paint. So I might set my painting station up with the intention that I might paint for three or four days, you know, not just a five minute stretch, but a pretty intensive period of painting. Uh, and one of the things that keeps me company on that these days is not so much music, although I might still listen to music. But now I'm much more likely to be listening to audio in the form of podcasts, especially, um, or more likely, probably, an audiobook. Audiobooks, of course, are um, easily accessible these days. And of course, the range of books available just gets bigger and bigger. And it's quite nice to listen to a book on a topic that you're actually painting. So, you know, I will often be um, have two or three books on the go that I'll be listening to via Audible um, on different topics. And one will be a Second World War topic, for instance, if I'm painting Second World War stuff, or one might be a Napoleonic topic or a bit of hornblower or something if I'm um, painting something of a Napoleonic, etc. So I try to match the listening to what I'm painting. But of course, that isn't always possible. And you know, the mind is a clever thing. You can do two things at once. You can paint whilst listening to uh, two other things. I'm a big fan of the BBC's In Our Time podcast. I listen to that quite a lot and I will even listen to um, podcasts on other topics. You know, I'm not precious about that. I listen to quite a lot of business podcasts and uh, while they're quite dry, they're actually, you know, whilst you're painting, it's quite a nice way just to catch up and just to get that little noise going around in your head uh, that just allows you to pass the time uh, a little bit. One of the things I tend not to do is um, take part in paint and chat. So I know that paint and chat is very popular. The trouble that I find with paint and chat is that I get too interested in what other people are doing and I'm much more interested in the chat than I am in the paint. And because these things are often video as well, you know, I I kind of find that I'm stopping what I'm doing and looking at what other people are doing. And, you know, you can call me antisocial, but actually I just don't find that that helps me uh, when I'm painting. The other side of that, of course, is that when you're doing paint and chat is that you're you're switched to transmit as well as receive. And that gives me a challenge because I'm painting in a family space, because I'm sitting in the dining room and I am painting. There are other people around me and quite commonly somebody else will be sitting in the lounge in the room next door watching TV. And it doesn't intrude on their space if I'm listening to something on my headphones but it does intrude in their space if I suddenly start to talk to my computer and, and you know take part in the chat part of paint and chat. So I tend to just be a listener. I tend to sit quietly, spend some time listening to something that's going to chill me out and allow me to relax, paint at my own speed and in my own space and enjoy my hobby in peace.